What's up guys? Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis and today I am excited because I get to do something that is very, very familiar to me. You've never really seen that many helis on my channel. But what you have to know about me is that before I did Drone Camps RC, I was a heli guy. And before I was a heli guy, I was an airplane guy as well. So pretty much my whole life in RC, RC cars also. Helis was my big thing. And then multi-rotors came around. It eliminated a lot of servos and dealing with balancing out DFC heads and fly barred heads. Uh, I went through the whole evolution of helis from nitro and gas and um, electric as well. And I had all types of models, starting out with the smaller ones. I flew a simulator for a month. If you're brand new and you're thinking about getting a heli, this is gonna be a cool review for you because we're gonna talk about what you need to do to get started flying helis in this review. The number one thing I'm going to recommend is simulators. My favorite simulator out there for helis might be Phoenix. So go ahead and Google Phoenix. Uh, I believe Horizon Hobby sells that one. Pick up a copy of Phoenix because there's all kinds of real helis that they sell out there like Goblin and they have a line helis in there all kinds of cool stuff so uh, get your feel in the simulator for about a month and then get your first small heli like something that you can fly around in the house and then also maybe with uh, uh, an idle up switch on there so that means 100 throttle or 80 percent throttle depending on how much you decide to put on it um, you can change your idle one and idle two modes so uh, we're going to talk about that in this review also the differences between idle one idle two and when you're not in idle up that's just going to be your your standard throttle mode and that's when you do not 3D your heli, by the way. Do not try to fly upside down without being an idle up because if you don't have 100% head speed or 80% head speed, it's a consistent head speed. When you go negative collective right here, you're going to have some bad things happen. You're going to fall to the ground because you're not going to have enough power to stay inverted. So um, one of the beginner sort of uh, pitfalls that, that some guys take when they first get started flying helis but super cool we're not going to fpv this one because i don't feel like it's a very safe thing to do i don't want to put myself in danger or someone else i always want to keep this heli line of sight because yes it might be a little easier to fly being able to sit in the cockpit and fly this but i'm putting myself at a huge risk and others around me so uh, we're not going to put a camera on this today i'm going to talk about traditional old school 3d stick bang and heli flying with you and we're also going to we're just going to show you some mild flips and and we're going to put it in idle up one which would be that 80 percent throttle all the time and then we're going to put it in idle up two and i'm also going to show you some hovering around and how how this heli actually sounds when you fly it i don't feel like there's a good video out there on this particular heli so i'm, I'm excited today to be able to make a decent review for this heli because um it's about half the price of the name brand helis out there. If you try to buy a ready to fly heli like this one, like the Align version of the, the 450 Dominator, it's probably gonna put you in upwards of like 500 or more dollars to get a ready to fly version. And I'm not even sure if they make that one um, anymore, but they, they might. If you, if you know that they do, put a comment down below and let me know that they actually still make that. But this one's cool because it is compatible with the Align T-Rex 450 Pro DFC version 2. So uh, I'll put a website up a link down there below where you can get parts for this. That's the cool thing. It's also compatible with 450 Terrot um, parts that are on the Banggood website as well. But Grand RC sells all the parts for the original T-Rex 450 Pro DFC edition. So uh, DFC edition means that it is the fly barless edition without the big stick going back here back and forth here with the paddles so um, this one has a receiver and a, an onboard gyro and everything all in one box back here on the very back of the heli which is super cool because the original version of this particular gyro did not have the receiver built into it so now it does and that's sort of a, a newer version of that but i think the price around 279 dollars is again like half the price and you get this transmitter with all the switches already set up to go. So I think that's a pretty good value um, under $300. And I'll, I'll try to get you guys a decent coupon code on that down below. But without further ado, let's take this bad boy outside with the Radiolink AT9S. Let's do some flying with that. And then we'll come back inside and we'll talk about this heli a little closer up. I'll show you how cool this little guy looks under the canopy. Um, super, super nice nice heli so let's go ahead outside now let's do some flying and we'll come back in and uh, we'll do some bench talk 
Now my first tip for you guys is going to be to throttle up very slowly, otherwise the tail is going to spin around, you're going to fall over and possibly damage things in the head on your heli, you'll have to replace things on the first day. So uh, come up very slow with your throttle, I mean a hairline at a time, and even still, when the head gets up to speed, look right there, I almost tipped. When the head gets up to speed, go ahead and push up on your throttle, and you'll get positive collective and the heli will lift off the ground. Keep the tail in first when you're learning how to hover. This way it keeps everything sort of left, right, forward, back on your right stick. And try to maintain a consistent throttle, super important. Play around with your left and right aileron positions. Um, fly the heli right, left, forward, backwards. And once you've learned that, you can sort of learn to start to turn the tail next. And that's generally the next step is flying side to you on each side, right and left. And then eventually the holy grail of hovering is flying nose in. If you can fly nose in, you can do just about anything with a heli. Um, and later on you'll get to doing inverted. We'll practice in idle up one, idle up two. And right now we're just going to fly it in the standard mode, which is flight position mode number one. The flight position mode switch is on the right hand side of the transmitter. Uh, also, keep an, a good eye out for people on your right and left, people walking up behind you, people walking up to you with dogs. Helis and dogs really don't mix because dogs love helis. They like to jump at them and they think there's something to play with flying around in the air. Uh, but you can seriously injure a dog or anyone walking up to this heli. They're quite dangerous. Um, even more so dangerous than maybe our mini quads. But this is hovering pretty good. Now let's talk about some aspects of this heli. Uh, for hardcore stick banging 3D, if you're a more experienced pilot, you're going to need to adjust the gain on the gyro. The gain was set a little bit high on this gyro, and it was overreacting. So when I did pitch, like pitch bump, and throttle out, sometimes the tail would sort of violently jerk around, and, and sometimes it'll swing the heli around in a 180 if you just punch out hardcore. Um, and I also realized that the heli's pitch needed to be adjusted so we'll talk about that a little bit later in this review um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll play around with that idle one position uh, so we're in idle one now and I'm gonna do some light flips and rolls um, nothing real big or spectacular there's a nice little roll right there um, roll to the forward forward position and tail back around I always seem to be more comfortable going forward sometimes rather than back but this heli has actually a pretty large loop setup. It's not super aggressive on your roll. I really like a really nice tight roll, uh, but again, I haven't actually flown a heli in about three years. So this is my first day flying a heli again after three years worth of um, not flying. I've been flying multi rotors and race quads. So this is sort of all coming back to me, and this is my, actually my second battery. Um, I used to do TikToks, funnels, um, inverted flying and all that fun sport flying stuff but now I'm back to the basics here and this is kind of fun for me uh, especially since this heli can be a very aggressive heli if you set it up to be that way and what you have to know about helis is that they can be set up to be super aggressive or they can be set up to be beginner friendly when I first got into helis a friend of mine was helping me out and he set my T-Rex 500 up to be uh, less aggressive so I got to give a shout out to Chocolinity, North Carolina. My buddy Doug Jefferson helped me get into helis. He helped me every step of the way. That guy is amazing. He's an awesome pilot and an awesome technician when it comes to rebuilding a heli or putting one together from scratch. When you get a kit version, you can get them much cheaper. And if you have somebody like Doug around to help you build it, it's actually quite a bit of fun because you learn a lot about your heli. If you do a build the first time out, see where that tail jerked around right there? I did a full throttle punch out and the gyro did something that we call blowout. Um, it just swings the tail back around so I had to be super careful of that. But once you get that pot adjusted there is a tool inside the kit where you can adjust the gyro intensity uh, up or down. You just turn it left or right. It's like a little tiny screwdriver. You just stick in there. But I was saying about the process of building it is really fun to build what is also super nice is being able to buy a ready to fly like this and gradually get into making repairs um, i always tell people in the multi rotors to start out with a bind and fly and sort of tiptoe your way into making the smaller repairs 
And then once you're familiar with smaller repairs, solders, and all that stuff, you can sort of get into doing a full build. But the cool thing about helis is that there's n hardly no soldering involved. If you have to make a repair on a heli, it's mostly physical damage that you're going to have to deal with, uh, or bearings blowing out, things like that. Um, but the more you fly them, the more familiar you get with them. And by all means, please do start out hovering like I am here, tail in, and then work around side two flying like this. And it's going to take some time. Learning to fly helis is a lot harder than flying a quadcopter. No stabilization whatsoever on this. It's completely manual. Um, and learning to fly idle up. Another tip for you guys, if you get this particular heli, make sure you're about 20 feet in the air when you hit idle up one, position one or position two. I have some people coming up on my right there, so I'm going to fly the heli a little further out. Make sure you're up 20 feet in the air when you hit idle up because sometimes the copter, the way this is set up, it will fly at the ground and you'll have to uh, do some full positive stick to, to make sure that you maintain a good hover without flying into the ground. It happens sometimes when the pitch is set up incorrectly uh, on the blades. So uh, you want to make sure that you have equal positive and negative pitch and that when your stick is at mid stick, your throttle stick is at mid stick, your blades are absolutely level. If they're up or down, that means you need to adjust the arms. And um, that is probably a whole nother video. But that, that's out there on YouTube. You can find how to um, level your heli blades on YouTube. So let's go ahead and let's set this heli down now. I'm going to attempt to land here. Not my best landing in the world, but I usually auto rotate. And uh, that way it takes less, it takes a lot of the, the, the tension out of the, the blades when you go to land. So if you do actually smack the ground like I did right there, you're likely not to actually hurt the heli blades just takes a lot of force off of the head, which is really what you want. So let's go ahead back into my studio. Let's talk about this heli on the bench. Let me show you a little closer look at it. I think um, you're going to be impressed for the price and the quality that we got here on this JCZK 300 DFC model. All right, guys, welcome back from the flight test. This is a profile view of the 450 by JCZK. Isn't that cool looking? 450 millimeter blades and this 450 millimeters from here to here. So when you open up both of these, it's going to be twice that for the wingspan of this uh, plus the head. So it's actually pretty wide out when you start flying this and you see that spooled up head going flying around you. Um, Man, it's an amazing looking sight, especially when you get into idle up and you really hear that head speed come up to 100%. It is pretty impressive. Uh, one thing, one huge tip I want to make to the beginners is never get this thing over your head or behind you. Like a traditional quadcopter, you don't have stabilization with this one. So um, even though you can have 100% throttle, you have zero stabilization. So you'll find out when you go to the simulator and you start flying helis and you're um, trying to, to learn how to keep this thing level, the first thing that we do is we learn how to hover the heli with it tail in. And that keeps all your orientations straight at you. That way, if you get around nose in, the big thing in helis is learning how to hover nose in. Once you get nose in, you can move to forward flight and forward flight into progressing into sport flying. Um, and that would be just mild flips and rolls. Eventually, you're going to get doing TikToks and flying inverted lower and lower and lower and all that cool evolution in helis that you can uh, take. So this is a whole different type of thing, um, but also a really cool thing. One also huge um, piece of advice I got to give you is that helis are very technical, just like quadcopters, um, but they are going to require you to maintain them more often. And you're also going to have to probably spend more time fixing these because if they just bump the ground, you could break a servo arm. You could break one of the plastic pieces on the head. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so some things to look out for when you're flying a heli. Now the body length on here is 638 millimeters from front end on the front of that battery tray all the way to the back of the tail boom. This one happens to be a belt drive. Some of them are a torque tube, um, but the belt drive is nice because it's, it's uh, maybe a little more forgivable 
than the torque tube. If you really hit that torque tube on the ground, you're going to break some, you're going to shear some gears out. Um, this might have a little bit more give, but we require more maintenance during the summer. So when it gets hot, that belt will loosen up and you'll have to loosen these three bolts in the very back and you'll have to sort of physically pull the tail out till that belt tightens up. Um, also, you're going to have to replace this belt every once in a while. There's a belt that runs all the way from a gear right here all the way to the back tail assembly right there. The body height is actually 218 millimeters from top to bottom and the diameter of the, all the blades circumference is actually 710 millimeters. I have that information here for you. Um, it does say that the main blade lengths are actually 355 millimeters. So they are just long enough so that they don't strike your tail blades. Now that's a big thing with helis that you don't want to have these two meet too close. When they're coming around at some point you could have a tail strike some guys that are running top blades that are too long these blades flex when you fly it so they go up and down and flex um, and i've we've you know we've had people hit their tail boom right here because they did some really hard maneuver and there's so much flex in that blade during that maneuver mostly on the larger helis um, like the 700 class but you want to keep your blades just a little bit loose but not too loose when i move the heli like this they should fall down so this one in the front is just a little bit tight. It came really tight. So take your Allen wrench and or your driver and loosen both of these up a little bit. There's a, top, there's a bolt on the top and a little lock nut down here. So you're going to have to loosen those up. They also give you some extra grommets in the box, which is cool. You have two of those right here. You get some extra 3M tape. And that's for sticking down your gyro. If your gyro and receiver comes up, you've got all of your receiver wires plugged in here. And most of those are also servo wires coming up. There's three servos in the head, one on the tail. This is a digital servo controlling the tail. So you have more resolution of control on that tail. Carbon fiber body. I'm just gonna take that off. And these grommets sort of seem to come off a lot they fall off a lot so that's maybe why they give you some extras but it's going to go ahead and remove this for you so you can see this and traditionally i've flown with fiberglass canopies and this one's actually plastic so um, even though it looks like fiberglass it is plastic but it seems to be very very durable and i think this might even be a little bit more forgiving than a fiberglass canopy for newbies so now you're looking at a little bit of side view of this heli and you can see the carbon side plate. I, I believe this is around two millimeters side plates on here that does have M3 hardware across the whole thing. There are a couple smaller M2 bolts in the very tops of these servos, top and bottom, holding them in. And you have one servo here and this is going to be your elevator servo back here and you have your two aileron servos back here. So your swash plate is right here. You have your two control arms going up to your blade grips right here. These are called your blade grips. There's also a bolt through the very middle right here. It's called the Jesus bolt and that holds on the very top assembly. So uh, one thing I'm gonna really recommend right here, there is a nut on this side. Make sure you take this nut off and you lock tight it um, because if this bolt falls out, the head will come completely off the top of the heli um, and especially this one down here also there's also a collar down here and if you move your head up and down with your hand you shouldn't feel any slack right here in this heli you should not feel any movement between that collar right there and this base plate right here um, for your head assembly so be very careful about having too much slack in there that will create slop when you're flying your heli now a lot of guys are going to want to know what type of pinion is on here. It is a 14 tooth pinion. Um, so that's a, a fairly traditional. Um, you can get different size pinions to run on your, your helis, but I, I recommend sticking with the stock pinion on that motor. Um, that's just one thing I'm going to recommend. And over on the other side right here, you have three wires that come down that plug into your ESC, which is on the very bottom right here. And I believe it's around a 30 amp ESC. So you don't want to run anything really bigger than a 3S battery. I mean, if you, you can't, you probably can run 4S, but um, I really wouldn't, I don't know if I'd recommend it because I think that with the torque of the blades and everything, and you might end up 
putting too much stress on the ESC because this heli really is built to run 3S and it's actually pretty scary on idle up um, when you're running even 3S battery on here. So uh, 4S would just make it even more intense for you. And as a new pilot, I try to avoid that, but um, you have your digital servo down here and you have your control rod going all the way out to the end here for your tail assembly linkage. So now I'm going to give you a little closer look at the heli's tail. And what I think is so cool about this particular heli is that everything on here is already upgraded to metal. Just look at that. Everything in the tail, the whole tail assembly is metal. Years ago when I was buying helis, everything came needing to be upgraded. I'm talking about all kinds of stuff in the tail. Everything was plastic. And the great thing about plastic is that, yeah, something will give... Um, and something can break and you can replace it for fairly cheap. The metal parts are more expensive, but if you bend something that's metal, it's most likely that you really, really hit something hard. And um, on those hard tail crashes, you will bend this tail shaft right here. It is possible to do that, but um, the blades themselves on the back, they're not super expensive. And you also want to just slightly loosen up these a little bit. They're a little bit tight from the factory. And if they're too tight, that'll cause the tail to do a little bit of waggling uh, also. And the gyro will overreact to trying to, to, to clean up some of that mess back there. So um, just take that in consideration. You also get a little tool in the box, which is going to allow you to adjust the gyro pot. Um, and the gyro pot is just going to allow you to soften up the intensity of the gyro or increase it. Um, either way you want to go. If you have tail wag when you get your particular, you get your heli, then you can use this to lessen the intensity of the gyro, which I think is cool because that way you should get a little bit less tail wag when it's not overreacting. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the radio link transmitter and we're going to put this into throttle hold. This this switch right here. So we're going to switch that. And your idle up switch is over here. So you have a three position switch here. So in the middle is going to be idle up one and idle two there. So on the transmitter itself, it's also a computer. And it's nice because you can go in here and change all these parameters if you'd like to. Press mode and go into the transmitter. Parameter model, dual rate and expo. A lot of the same type of setup as Tyrannus, but a little bit more fancy with the color screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this throttle hold on there. And typically, you're gonna take the blades off, guys, because I actually had a friend of mine plug his in and it flew up and hit his kitchen ceiling with his wife standing in there cooking. So um, be extra, extra careful with your helis indoors. Never, ever plug them in indoors with the blades on, but we're going to do it today for demonstration purposes. Um, did you see the blades twitch when I plugged it in? When you're plugging in this type of heli, you really need to let it sit for about five seconds until you see those blade twitch. Uh, if you arm your heli and you start flying it right away, then the, the gyro didn't stabilize. Um, so you have to give it about five seconds and, and watch for those blade twitches. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this head assembly setup works out and you do have a gyro so the swatch plate will actually move around it should move left and right and your blade should move a little bit as well when you're moving the heli forward and backwards you can see that swatch plate move and try to stay level and that's helping you out just a little bit but when you start flying this <laughs> believe me it will be uh, all up to you to keep it level so i'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down now level with the swatch plate and i'll show you guys what this should look like from the sticks on the transmitter. So I'm going to turn it to the side and this is your swash plate and it's just a, it could be used a little bit of adjustment right here. It's not totally level. This back arm right here needs to be raised up just a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you the left aileron. So it should tilt to the left like it's doing there and tilt to the right. And now we're going to do elevator forward and that's going to push the nose down and bring the nose up would be this way. Okay, very different than what you're used to seeing. So now we're going to use the collective stick on the left-hand side of the transmitter, and that's gonna be a throttle stick right here. So we're gonna push that up, and notice that it raises the amount of pitch on the blades. Now, I believe that this could be adjusted quite a bit. Um, it seemed like I had way more positive pitch 
than negative pitch. See how much negative pitch I have right there? It's almost level. So this needs to be adjusted. Um, and I can do that mechanically um, and just actually uh, raise or lower these arms right here and and that's that's pretty much what we're gonna have to do there Yeah, so we'll have to use a pitch gauge and Adjust those you can also get a digital pitch gauge these days But that's way more pitch positive pitch than negative pitch. Look at that. It's pretty much level so um, in idle up when I was trying to come back down the heli was taking its sweet time coming back down now normally in a perfect pitch setup, I will have 50-50 one direction and the other, positive and negative. And if you don't, it's just going to be a hard either to get altitude or lose altitude. Um, super important that you have the same amount of pitch going both directions. Um, because normally they're really responsive up and down when you're in idle up. I mean, it's it's amazing how fast a heli will move up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, and they're actually really, really fast. So now I'm going to show you what would be considered the rudder on the helicopter. And uh, if you're flying multi rotors or race quads, uh, this would be your yaw stick. So turning to the left and right should bring the tail blades just like this. So if I push to the left, it should bring the tail to the left and pushing right should bring it this way. So notice that the leading edge is on this side. The trailing edge is on this side. So when you turn the blades, the leading edge of the blade should have your tail spinning away from the body of the copter. So if it's rotating the wrong direction, which would be toward the copter, and this is pretty much the same for most of the helis out there, um, the blades turn clockwise, the main blades, and your tail blades will turn counterclockwise, just like that. So if you repair your heli and something is on wrong, you can have things rotating the wrong direction. My only criticism of this heli could probably be the main gear. I think the main gear could probably be a little bit better. I think the uh, aligned gears are probably black. One of the big problems with helis, the two big problems, well, there's three, and there's probably more, but main problem would be braking blades, tail blades, and this main gear. These are pretty much the three main things you're going to break all the time. The next thing you're going to break, not really break, but you're going to bend would be the main shaft running through the whole thing. Uh, and there's a few bolts here that were released the whole head assembly off of the top of this heli. So um, the bolt down here on the very bottom and then this collar bolt and it'll release most of the head off the top. So if you had to replace that, I have done them before. They're not the end of the world, but if you're going to fly helis, that's one of the main things you're going to be doing most of the time is replacing the main shaft. Uh, not a super hard job. So when you're getting ready to tuck your heli into bed at night, you go ahead and you grab your uh, little blade holder here. And you can get name brand ones, but this is the one that came with it. Just a little piece of foam. The blades go through like that and attach to the very back of the boom. And by the way, that's not a carbon boom. It's actually an aluminum boom back there. So you also have some carbon struts coming off the back to sort of make the tail a little more rigid and less wobbly. Um, the less vibration in here, the better. If you see that at any time your heli has some kind of strange vibration and it seems like the head is vibrating, there could be a, a few things going on in the head. It could be that you have a bearing block in the head block um, or you have a bearing in the head block that's needing to be replaced. And the way to, to diagnose that is to pull this head and put your finger on every single bearing in there and just make sure that all of those bearings are not notchy. If you feel that they're notchy, that means that you might have broken some bearings inside it. But I have to say, I'm actually pretty pleased with the quality of this because everything came all blinged out in metal, top to bottom, fly barless head on here, carbon fiber body, decent looking digital servo on the back, all in one sort of uh, gyro receiver here with everything all plugged in. They also give you extra sort of servo leads here in case you crash and you break one of these and you don't have to solder one back because you have a whole like pile of them here. You also get a battery converter for your radio. So if you wanted to use um, eight AA batteries, you can do that or you can use 
a 3S LiPo in the back as well with a JST. So that's what I have in the back of my radio is a LiPo. You also get a cable for doing any type of firmware updates on your gyro, which are hopefully available somewhere on the internet. And that's about it for what you get. But this is so cool because everything on here looks exactly like the Alliance stuff and you can get parts for it, which is um, something to be said for some of the other helis out there that you buy. You know, you have a little experience with the heli and then you have a, a mild crash and then you can't find parts anywhere. And that's probably the biggest pitfall of buying helis from China, honestly. Um, some of them out there are kind of one of a kinds and they only sell the heli and then you're left to not able to find any parts without buying a whole new heli and that's ridiculous so um, it's cool that they actually offer an option for this one so uh, i'm happy to have had given some advice for you guys for the new guys getting into it if you're interested to fly helis um, i'll try to bring some more heli videos to my channel and uh, we'll keep keeping on with the helis um, because i'm i'm very interested in them and they are super fun to fly and um, a little more to work on and maintain but uh, if this was just a part of your hobby time or maybe this was all you do is fly helis there are a lot of people i know that just fly helis and have a lot of fun doing it so i appreciate you guys watching my reviews guys i'm justin davis and uh this has been the jc zk dfc version of their 450 so thanks again guys i'll see you on the next one